Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning. Happy Thursday. Y'all ready for a bounce or what? It's due. It's definitely due. So let's take a look at this. Obviously very extended straight from all time high V shaping down. How often do you see that? You don't really see that, right? You see some intermittent bounces in here when you see a move coming off an all time high, um, you know, intermittent bounces. In this case, we got a straight shot to the downside, which is telling me this bounce should be extended as well. It's going to be a choppy environment for sure. Um, talking about this for a couple of days now that this is going to be a tough environment. This bounce is really going to mess people up because you're going to want to short the bounce. So maybe a little bit too early. Maybe you're going to get out of the bounce a little bit too early. Maybe the first bounce is going to be a fake out. It's actually going to go down and make a new low. It's definitely going to be choppy, but it's very clear a couple of zones that they do want to, they do want to make this to bounce from, which is coming from the NASDAQ. Now this in here, you can see the momentum has stalled, right? So whenever we have a shift in behavior, which is a shift in momentum, we anticipate that this is over with, right? That type of pressure that we're seeing is over with because it's not sustained anymore. We saw sustainable pressure in here. Now this big candlestick marks the bottom. That looks like a volume climax to me on that big candlestick. We get an inside bar, an upper wick. So bears push it down, they push it down further, but now bulls were able to push it up twice. So inverted hammer, but an inside bar. Bulls push it up because you have an upper wick. It looks bearish, but it's telling you, okay, momentum's starting to stall. Push it a little bit further. Bullish reversal hammer telling us momentum is stalled. So now if you're in a trend that was causing so much pressure to the downside, a bearish trend, bearish momentum, and it's stalled, you've lost that momentum. Now we need to go through a consolidation phase. And in this case, a consolidation phase is up a correction back to the upside. We could have a scenario now where be prepared that it does go and flush the low again. It goes and makes another low, but because we're starting to see the exhaustion become visible in the chart, I would be prepared that that would be a dip buy. It could be a 402 touch. We were thinking 404, 402. Worst case scenario, we come down into here, into the GP, just under 4K. That could be a scenario. It would be extreme to get into this level. Maybe 402 could be a potential, or we're just going to go from here. So we're already starting to see the reversal signs. The momentum of this trend is ended. We should be looking for a corrective phase back up. If this is the bounce, obviously, first first place you're going to look for is, of course, the ADMA here. And I'm going to be looking at it on the four hour because we haven't had a back touch of it. We haven't touched it at all. So that's where I'm going to be looking for first target to get back to the ADMA, which right now is at 410. Uh, 0.382, where's that 0.382 going to line up? Right there, 410. Everything lines up to get into that zone. So to keep it simple, right? To keep it simple in here, you see a little bit of spike in volume just came in. Did that just come in right now? We just had some data that's coming out. Uh, PPI numbers just came out. 0 0.6 month over month versus expected 0 0.3, year over year 6.2 versus expected 5.9, previous 4.2. Okay, so that's why we're getting a little bit of spike in, in volume. So now we want to see if we can hold the trend, right? Get a bounce, get a nice steady algo bounce. That's what you're going to want to see, right? Continuation back to the upside. And then start looking at that 410 zone. That's what I'm going to be watching for. Too far extended. Look at the daily ADMA. Look at the 8 hour ADMA, 4 hour ADMA. We are there right now right get up over that zone we got rejected in here get back up over that zone then we start thinking about the 410 let's go check out nasdaq nasdaq started the bounce so the nasdaq started the drop nasdaq starts the bounce that's just the way it works um so here it was right where did they come to they came down into the golden pocket far too extended in here uh, not as extended as es because it had a better bounce than what es had had so we're looking at this adma here which is going to be up at the 13166 zone i wouldn't be surprised to see this right in here come all the way back up into the 13329 zone that's what i'd be looking for again if we flush the low i'm going to anticipate no follow through and then we'll go to the bottom in the gp and that'll be the play btc um, you know, fat, pa past few videos I've been talking about that it looks like it's going to go down, right? It does look like it's going to go down. It's in a corrective phase and I believe the corrective phase is going to be steeper because we were already showing signs of weakness in here, a new high drop down, a new high drop down. We had a wedge, a wedge that broke bare. We were back testing that wedge back to the upside and now you have a trigger, right? A trigger being Alon's tweet <laughs> about Bitcoin. Boom, you get big pressure to the downside. That was going to happen. Something was going to trigger because the momentum was stalling to the upside. And now you have a lightning rod. Boom, it shoots it down. Just like he shot it up, 
I don't know where that was. I think it was somewhere in here. Hey, you're still holding a lot of gains from where Elon impacted Bitcoin. So, I mean, it's still pretty good. But as of right now, you have an extension move in here, <clears throat> a strong extension move that got too far extended. Hey, if you understand volume climaxes, you understand where to buy, right? Where to buy, that caused the bounce. Volume climax, that caused the bounce twice. So now, if you're looking at this extension move that we have in here, we came down to the two to one extension off of that zone. So we should be looking for a retracement back up. Potentially, you're not going to break this right in here. You know, 5183, this is 0.5. Potentially, that's not going to be broken in here. So watch that ADMA. It's going to line up in that zone. And then I would be looking for a retest of that low or even lower. But ultimately right now, I do believe we're going to go into a longer correction period. We could hang around in here and maybe we're going to set up what's going to look like a falling wedge in here, potentially. Right? We could look for something and it just drags out near the bottom of the range. But I am looking at 418, 41842 down in here, which would be a move off of this zone, right in here, down into this range. That's what I'd be looking for. If it gets extended, you know, then we start looking for a, a steeper retracement, which we don't want to go that far right now. We want to call sub 40 when we're still in the 50s, right? We want to be thinking, what's a realistic target based off of this move? If it breaks over the 51837, we'll have to revisit and see what that's going to look like. Watch the GP, watch the back test of this trend line that's been absolutely been a major factor in here. But that's what I'd be looking on BTC. Let's go, <coughs> excuse me, let's go check out crude. Crude's doing that thing, right? It's hanging out in this zone and it's giving you a little bit of pause for concern, right? A little bit of pause for concern. So you don't want to be in too much of a big bullish position size until we could get confidence that we broke out of this zone and then we could start thinking about higher move, right? Because this could be another stall and we come back down for a couple more weeks in this range and we trade in the 60s in this range and don't break support, right? Don't break 57. You know, I wouldn't be looking for that. Of course, if it did, then we're going to have to think about something a little bit different, but we still got to break through the zone. So crude is hanging out in here. Let's zoom in here. Check out this eight hour chart. You can see here a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern. Okay. So you can see that the fact that there is something in here that you can be concerned that there is a head and shoulders pattern developed here on crude, um, left shoulder head, right shoulder see where i drew that head what was that let's go wake up so look at this in here right we were looking at that basically a double top almost um head and shoulders i'd be watching this neckline down in here which also means we can't lose this trend line down in here if we lose this trend line then it tells us we're going into further weekly consolidation and we've topped in this zone again unable to break through this range so keep that in mind as you're watching crude um I think that's it, right? That's it. Let's uh, actually, I'm going to touch on gold here because gold seems pretty interesting that potentially, potentially that gold's going to get going. Okay. We have to think, is there going to be some inverse correlation now where, you know, BTC's kind of been stalling and gold's been kind of just walking up and now if BTC goes into a steeper correction, do we start to see money going back into gold again? Um, we've been seeing some momentum already, right? 1677 to 1820. We pause right under the zone. Are we going to curl and go for another leg up? So let I me mean, keep an eye, keep an eye here on the supper trend line. And of course, the GP 1851 to 1860. Let's get into the tickers that are requested today. First one is CBE Canadian energy. Let's check it out. And all right. So it looks like we have a big weekly bull flag shaping up in here. Let's go see what this looks like. We're chopping it around higher, lower, low, lower low but bulls are buying it up right so this does look like it's a nice weekly bull flag shaping up yes it is it's a beautiful weekly bull flag lower wicks of course don't forget like i just talked about with crude we're gonna need crude to not break out of that not fall out of that zone right so we do have a bull flag in here um lower wicks lower wicks that's looking pretty good i mean i like it definitely you could think hey i'm gonna trigger on a break of that trend line factor in keep your you know keep a peek over your shoulder on what crude is doing is this even like a little bit of a falling wedge in here on the daily, right? We're right at that upper trend line. Go signal, feel a little bit comfortable. We're seeing some volume coming in today and breaking it, breaking that 1004 and after 1004, 1022, I'm going to imagine 1004 and volume means we're gonna go back up to the highs and we're gonna be looking for that bull flag to play out. DraftKings. What's the message here on DraftKings? Yeah, uh, a bounce trade, right? I would think, 
if the market does give the good bounce today, if it's the follow through bounce today, anything that's in an oversold condition, anything that's too far extended from the ADMA, look for it to have a great day, right? And then look for everybody to celebrate that their name bounced, but really it's just the market causing everybody to bounce. So what I'd be looking for right now, this is a pretty steep retracement in here. It's vertical to the downside. This is beat up, daily oversold, 21. One of the top plays to look for a bounce. It looked like it tried to go the other day, right? Pushed it back down yesterday with the market being uh, extremely beat up yesterday. In this zone in here, far extended, we're outside the LBB, right? We're outside the LBB, it's looking for a bounce as well, just like a lot of other names in the market. Let's see what's happening here in the pre-market. We're a little bit up, right? We're a little bit up. Now, a lot of names that are a little bit up today that are, you know, starting a little bit higher. If the market pulls down early to get some more li liquidity, right? Grab some more shares before it gets shot back up. Watch for those names to do it. They come right back to the lows and everyone freezes. Like you're in a bounce in the pre-market and then the morning flush happens and you're like, oh, it's not bouncing and then it goes, right? So be prepared for those types of scenarios and all bounce plays that are gonna be brought up today. So yeah, it's very extended. It's a beat up stock. Um, you know, it's gonna try and bounce now the way the market's trying to bounce in the pre-market right now, which the market is bouncing already. So keep that in mind. Once the bell rings, do we just go? Um, which would be, you know, fine, but most people get faked out when they come back down to the low, thinking, oh, this is not a bounce, this is a trap. And then meanwhile, that's going to actually create the opportunity to get that algo walk up afterwards. There's going to be some hidden uh, bearish divergence in here right now, right? So, you know, how strong is the bounce going to be? Is it going to stall right away and then come back down and correct this? Keep that in mind. But it's, it's I mean, it's due. Like, I, I, here's what's going to happen today, right? There's going to be so many names that are bouncing. And people are going to, okay, this one's bouncing. This one's bouncing. Stick to your chart. Stick to your chart, stick to your play. DraftKings looks like a good a good potential trade for a mean reversion bounce. Palantir, Palantir did their bounce already and did an inside bar yesterday. Didn't get follow through. Um, don't need this. Didn't get follow through. And this is one of those scenarios where it's a pause day, it's an inside bar, the market was oversold, the market didn't get follow through. You wanna see it today now, right? So just a pause and now you wanna break yesterday's high which is up at 1999, we're trading up a little bit here and then break through that daily ADMA and then we can start thinking about a retracement into this zone. That's what I'm looking for. We would want to break yesterday's high and not do a double inside bar. You don't want to do it. Well, if you do a double inside bar, just be patient and then look for a continuation play tomorrow. Tesla, do for a bounce as well. What did Tesla, I actually haven't seen what Tesla, Tesla's up here in the pre-market. Okay, but look, like everybody else. Um, due for a bounce, ultimately, like we do think it's going to go lower, right? I do think it's going to go lower. There's a couple of plays that I'm scouting that I do want to get into bigger positions when they go lower. Apple being my first and foremost um, that I want to see in the 100 range, but we need to bounce first. We need to create these bounces before we could see those next leg downs. So for today, Apple is, I mean, uh, Tesla is bouncing. Right, just like everybody else, you could say we have an Adam and Eve pattern in here in the pre market. You got your V, you're coming in with your rounded bottom now. So, we're going to be looking up at our resistance in here 620 up to 627. Of course, if Tesla turns on the big bounce today, it's going to be a big pay, right? It's going to be a big pay, but we're seeing it just like everybody else do for a bounce. It's actually bouncing from the zone that we thought we would bounce from. It's actually, you know. It's right there, right? Just gotta move that up a little bit and starting to bounce in here. Watch the four hour ADMA because it's dragged this down. Can we get a close up over it? And then we look for that Adam and Eve. If we think about this pivot in here, this double top straight down, all we're doing, don't forget guys, is looking for a bounce. These bounces, some of them are gonna be glorious. You're gonna sell them too soon. Some of them are gonna be, oh, I chose the shittiest bounce. I chose the one that bear flagged immediately. It's gonna be something like that, right? 617. 631, watch those zones on Tesla. Let's move on and talk about Amazon. Amazon went a little bit steeper in here than I thought it was gonna go. I thought it would have been a GP. I thought we would have held the lower trend line. We lost it, we came down to 0.786, and now we're trying to do a very similar thing that we just talked about, you know, V, Adam and Eve. Now we wanna break that resistance in here. Um, what is that? That is at 32.40. Again, another name, looking for a bounce. Inside bar yesterday. Watch the inside bar high yesterday, which was 3208. 
we break that, watch that daily ADMA. I would say that this is a name that should get a better bounce, right? It should get a better bounce because it's a straight shot down from um, our earnings, right? Straight shot down. So if I'm looking for names that should see a better bounce because of where they came from and on bullish earnings, right? And NASDAQ, heavy NASDAQ related and NASDAQ being the cause for all this is that a better bounce should be looked for in here. And that, that could be, and when I talk about selling bounces too soon, it's going to be names that run all the way back up to the GP. That's going to be the scenario where the first thing, the first instinct is going to be bear flag, right? Bear flag, daily ADMA, bear flag 0.382. You know, does it need to be Amazon? I would think Amazon's going to be one of them that's going to have that potential. So let's keep that in mind. You know, is Amazon going to be the one that comes back into the zone? And don't forget, it's been in the zone forever. So to just come back up in here, and this is where the market's going to become difficult. So one of the things is if you're in a bounce and you hit a big trade early, especially if you do it in options in Amazon, um, you're not going to want to give those back, games back. So as soon as you see it pause, you're likely going to want to get out and get out of the trade, which is fine. But stick with it because you see that hourly higher low start to curl. It's a low risk trade. Just get in. Use that hourly higher low as your stop in case we continue to melt up. That's what I'll be watching on Amazon Coin. What's Coin doing today since uh, BTC is down? Oh, it's, it's got this got no correlation, does it? It's like no correlation at all so far. Uh, inside bar, right? Yesterday we broke up a little bit higher. It's a little bit odd that this momentum came in and then boom, immediately yesterday was shot down. The entire candlestick was wiped out right um obviously it's not an inside bar but today we could be looking for an inside bar where are we here 281 no we're at the low of the range we're at the low of the range so let's go zoom in here check out this four hour chart four hour chart is trying to bounce now off of a triple bottom in here tweezer bottom triple bottom in here on this four hour chart that's your support that's it you want to use that support otherwise we're going to fade to our lows this should go higher Right, we're coming off of our bottom pretty strong. Coming off of our bottom in here, you know, we should be looking for a next run up. Let's see where this pivot's coming off of. Is that 0.786? Let's look at this here coming off of our low. Real bodies were trying to hold the GP in here, you know. That could be it, right? That could be it. That's a good stop loss if, if you want to play coin. I think that's a good stop loss. And now to see a continuation play to the upside. Watch the 30 minute, right? 30 minutes, see if we can hold that 30 minute ADMA. Drag us back up. And then, you know, watch for a short term resistance in here, you know, somewhere in that, just around that 297 range in here. Well, let's just draw it, right? I would look in that 297 range. 291, 293. 297 we stalled popped up over it we couldn't hold i would look for something in here let's watch that reaction in there that's what i'd be looking for on coin spy bounce what strike for dailies i would definitely think about you know if you could get a good entry right I would definitely think about something at the money and something out of the money. At the money, a little bit more size. Out the money, less size. Like if I was going to say, hey, I have $5,000 today to trade. Uh, a bounce. A uh, daily bounce. I'm willing to put in 5000 and my risk tolerance is going to be uh, 30%, right? So, you know, I'm going to lose, what is that, $1,500. Um, i am going to say that uh, I'd go in the money. 407 something like that, at the money. And then I would go 410 out the money in case this really really gets going and we see a massive bounce but you know if i'm going to put the five i would do four at the money i would do one out the money that's how i would handle it gold we already did gfl gfl environmental let's check it out it's a beat up stock dumped head and shoulders pattern collapsed reversal candlestick attempted yesterday Right, one of the, one of two things: inside bar today, and then you see something tomorrow, or we break yesterday's high, we confirm this candlestick, and we start thinking about that gap fill up to thirty one ninety two. Let's zoom in here. This thing doesn't move in the pre market. Yep, doesn't move in the pre market. Um, double inside bar here on the four hour in the pre market as well. So you could be watching the inside bar break, which would be a first trigger go signal 
on a break of 3094. SCCO. Okay, copper. So everything's looking like really good in copper in terms of where we are, right? Um, and the overall momentum. So I just want to check out copper in here, copper futures. So one thing we got to understand is although like I'm interested in copper, but it's really late to this move. And that's generally when people that are not in the space get interested in the space. Like it's like, oh, there's this thing called copper that is moving. Oh, look how much it's moved. So we have to understand that right now copper is all, all the buzz all the talk all the momentum and i want to get interested and i want to start having more coverage on it but we need to understand that we need consolidation to find uh, safe entries up here is very difficult so it's very challenging so you could say listen i want to get my foot in the door but when i see the weekly candlestick starting to print a reversal starting to show us a reversal and we're extended see what happened in here we were extended we printed a reversal we came back down in these cases we didn't really get too extended we were hanging out this one you can see just slightly right this is too far extended right now all right if you think about this from a bollinger band perspective weekly bollinger band we're outside the upper bollinger band. you can't do that right i mean it's not going to work out so just keep that in mind right now that um, we have a lower high on the chart as well. So we have a spinning top candlestick, went back up and we set up a lower high. So it's going to give me right now pause for concern. A new high is likely going to be sold because I'm going to factor in what's happening here on this weekly chart. And, you know, even if you just factor in the monthly, but, you know, monthly could take a long time to play out. So when we relate, when we consider anything, you know, I said, let's add this name on our watch list here. Like, yes, let's be prepared for it. But let's see some solid consolidation in the copper futures and then see what can we find in here um, for an opportunity. So yesterday you could see the momentum, a shooting star candlestick, bullish and buffer candlestick, shot back down yesterday because it's telling me copper is showing us signs of exhaustion, which is going to show us signs for a consolidation. Now, what we would like to see on a play like this is that it does continue to consolidate, right? It does continue to consolidate. And then we could find an entry somewhere down in here and then, you know, drags out a little bit, copper consolidates, and then we look for the larger move to the upside. Big run. Now, this is exhaustion, right? We're stalling it. We should look for a period of consolidation up in here that's going to drag out a little bit, just, you know, using the what I'm seeing in copper futures as my guide. The question was, weekly looks like a double top, pull back to the 0.326, two hour seems uh, confirm we're heading lower. Yeah, I believe we're heading lower, which would be good. Allow it, allow a base, a new base. This has got no base, right? This has got no base. This is just running, 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 constant run. And then we look for a lengthy period of a base in here before it's next leg up. XLE. Um, same signals as crude. We're, we're concerned about the topping uh, portion in here. So foot in the door is what I would re recommend is keep your foot in the door in case, you know, something happens uh, fundamentally happens overnight. You're like, oh, there it goes. It's gone. Uh, or just wait, wait till the breakout is. I got a foot in the door with XOM, just a foot in the door. When this breaks out, then I could say, hey, do I want to add or I'm going to be looking for a retracement. All of this could use a retracement. XOM retracement, I would look down in here. That's where the retracement could come. The reason why I put my foot in the door yesterday was because it looked like we had the potential that we would just pivot off of the daily 80 May and start to go, right? And then it got shot down, right? Which is telling us, yeah, that pressure is here. So I'm looking at this zone for a new entry. If it, get, if it gets there, it's 59.41, right? If it gets here, it loses the 0.5 into this zone. So be a little bit patient in terms of sizing because we do have major overhead resistance but when that resistance breaks it can be a launching pad we want to hang out near these zones and that's why i went july with you guys because it's time right we're going to give it time ba so ba so, so it's a little bit steeper right now we're going to look for how is this going to play out in here right it's going to be something a little bit lower maybe we're going to come down to that trend line that's been pushing us down we saw some momentum to the downside i'm assuming we're up here in the pre-market a little bit up here in the pre-market for me now ba like not to try and catch a pivot off of the bottom you know unless it gives a great signal is play the breakout of the upper trend line 
right? Because then I'm going to be thinking that uh, upside is going to be significant from that range. Coming off of our low in here, off of this move, we're thinking where this retracement is coming to. All right. GP, we lost the GP. Could be coming down in here to the 0 0.786209. We'll see how this is going to work out in here right now. There's some form of a correction in here, right? I do think we're going to get near the end of it. Near the end of it, if 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 it's not going to be there very quick, like today, inside bar and then go. But upper trend line is going to be the best signal right now. Workhorse. What's Workhorse doing after Kathy started to sell? Inside bar. So we had a bull day we had an inside bar yesterday today we're trading up a little bit higher so inside bar bull break would be up at 1851 1847 that's what you're going to want to see you're going to want to see the inside bar bull break it definitely looks like there's a bounce opportunity in here it does have the pressure from um sentiment right especially with the one of the vehicles that caused it to run up which was arc is causing it to run down as well it's definitely due for a bounce. You look for a bounce eventually, a big a big bounce, a big bullish engulfing candlestick, something along those lines. But keep in mind, this thing could continue to fade. This EV space is very weak and sentiment is down. Um, market entirely bounces. You want to break yesterday's high, you want to break that inside bar. Melly. What did Melly do? I haven't looked at this in a long time. Okay, so yeah, so it's a beat down stock, right? Now, I mean, it was far too extended. This is a monthly chart that got far too extended. This is gonna be in a long, long period of consolidation. And I'm talking about months upon months that this is not going to go back to its highs. So short-term perspective, there's always a short-term trade available. Broke our support down in here, and then we bounce, right? This is where people bail, oh no, it's over, and then that's when the bounce starts. Inside bar yesterday, opening up as an inside bar again? No, we are opening up lower, 12.93, so we're opening up a little bit lower. Volume was engulfing the bull day that came in. Where's the weekly? Weekly bear flag getting follow through right now. This is a tough name right now to try and catch, right? You're going to be catching it like this should go lower, right? This should definitely be looking for a much larger leg down, right? We should be looking for a much larger, larger leg down. You know, if I were to look at this and say a potential target, I mean, if you're just looking for a short term bounce, it's different. But in terms of where this chart should go, we should come down in here, right? Minimum over time. But in terms of a bounce play, is it oversold? It's not oversold. It's oversold on the four hour. You know, you watch that four hour EDMA. Watch for some trend change, watch some for bull volume, watch for a 15 minute trend change, something that really gets the stock going. American Airlines. Airlines really look like a nice setup, right? Everything looks good on airlines for a nice setup. Is it gonna be just a little bit steeper retracement than what we thought, like we thought could get a breakout in here, we didn't get the breakout. This nice little base and then pop up was thinking, got me thinking here we're gonna go for a breakout, but no, it wants a little bit more downside. We got dropped in here. Go signal, break of that trend line, or catching where this daily higher low is gonna come from. So it's a little bit more complicated in terms of where this dip's gonna be bought. Right now, off of this zone to here, Right? Can you look for a GP retracement in there? Could that be the scenario? Or do you just wait for the break of that upper trend line? GP is where we went yesterday, 2066, 2020, 2028. Or I'd be surprised. That would be shocking to come down in here and then bounce. But that's what I'd be looking for on American Airlines that potentially we could be off of one of these two zones, break that upper trend line, and it's go time. XOM. I think I just talked about XOM. Um, pressure now, right? We broke out, but you can't use just XOM as its own vehicle. You gotta look at XLE, you gotta look at what's happening in crude. They haven't broken those resistances. So although we broke out over here and we didn't get the cup and handle that I wanted to see, which would have been a little bit better, instead we broke out. I mean, the psychology is gonna be thinking the same. People are still gonna call it a cup and handle. Um, inside bar, 
no we're opening up lower 59.42 so we're opening up lower 59.42 59.68 i'd be watching this zone in here okay this is going to be an opportunity in here 57.58 uber uber what do we got going on in here higher open we try to bounce push it down yesterday with the rest of the market in this major zone previous all-time high in the gp as well closed inside the gp all right it closed right inside of it inside bar today or we're going to look for a big bow day um pressure to the downside it has to be over like it has to be look at how vertical we've gone down in here right vertical to the downside we think about this extension move Two to one. Can we go two six one? Where's two six one? Forty one. You now maybe forty one could be the bottom down in here. Let's go. Let me see what the two two. Because I don't have that programmed. Let's check that out in here. That's right at the bottom in here. I would say there's not too much more room to the downside inside bar today very likely but if we could get a nice bull you know algo apparent in the market this is a name that should be looking for a huge bounce opportunity all the way back up to you know 47 48 range lots of opportunity in here all right guys let's have a great day don't forget don't trade like an asshole peace out everybody i'll see you in the chat later